Well, I went to Ada, Oklahoma to tour the Gamey engine test stand, and it was a partial bust. Stick with me on Flywire now for the story. Hi, I'm Scott Perdue, and today on Flywire, I was going to tour the Gamey engine test stand, but it didn't work out. Behind me here, uh, I think it's a great backdrop, is uh, putting a GFC 500 autopilot in my T6. Why? Well, just because I can. Thanks for asking. Um, I had intended to fly up uh, to Ada and maybe fill up with G100 UL on my Bonanza. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, but the weather was lousy, so I decided to drive there instead. When I got to the airport, there was a problem with the cooling supply system for the test stand engine. Uh, I guess that's an important kind of thing. I don't want it to get too hot. Apparently a uh, lightning strike had gotten into the, one of the motherboards that controls the air system and they were trying to find a channel on another board to control the system as an interim measure. And uh, well, just before noon, they were very, very close, but the weather forecast now is projecting within a couple hours, very bad storms with multiple tornadoes headed this way. So being the brave soul that I am, I decided to Didi Mao, that means leave now, uh, and run for it, okay? And just come back another day. So no test stand today, sorry. Not their fault, not my fault. I just they had, didn't want to deal with tornadoes and hail. What can I say? But I do have something very interesting for you. While I, and while I was waiting, I talked George Brawley into doing, looking at that O-ring swelling issue raised by the mechanic in California. So before I do that, I want to tell you a little bit about a report uh, that was done in Canada. This is it right here. It's September of 1983. This study looked at different effect at the effect of different fuels on nitro rubber, rubber on nitro rubber O-rings. Specifically, they were interested in the tensile strength, elongation, and swelling properties when O-rings were exposed to low and high aromatic content fuels. They looked at it mostly interested in jets, okay, jet fuel. They looked at JP4, which by the way is, is basically Jet A1 with about a 40%, 100 to 130 Avgas mix in it and Jet A1 with an average aromatic content greater than 40%. This is well above the specification limit of 22 to 25%. I'm gonna post it on my website for you to see uh, if you like by yourself, but I just warn you, it's gonna be a couple of weeks before I can get to that. Uh, I got something else to do instead for a couple of weeks. You can see the fine details there, and that's good. One quick observation though is, is that these tests were done over 150 degrees Fahrenheit that's higher and because higher temperatures accelerate the chemical reactions. That way you get a longer look. If it's 24 hours, you get you know, the effect of a week or more. The result that was that no deterioration of rubber properties was found. The conclusion went further to note that the test plan may have been severe to be realistic and a better test might have been better approximating by cycling the test over months, several months rather than 16 days. The test plan measured dynamic properties under stress after immersion, whereas most O-ring functions, O-rings function in a passive mode, seated in place, and expand to fill the available cavity, thereby prevent fuel leakage. Okay, it's an important note, kind of the way we, way we use O-rings too. So anyway, the proposed, they proposed that swelling due to higher aromatics after immersion might be an advantage. The bottom line of the report found that the problems with higher aromatic fuels are not as serious as was once believed. And this was over 42 years ago. It wasn't yesterday. It wasn't last year. It's been a while. It's a known thing. Let me say again, it's a foot stomper here, I think. Higher aromatics, regardless of the base stock, gasoline or kerosene, leads to some O-ring swelling, which is a positive and not a negative in a confined space. I feel safe to say that immersion in fuel rarely happens to an O-ring prior to installation, meaning that it make it harder to install, okay? So let's look at the O-ring that test that Gammy performed for me. The test article was the same fuel control valve from a 421C as used in the California video, using the same mil-spec O-rings with the same size dash 14 as used in the video. Additionally, 12, dash 12 and dash 13 versions were also on hand, the dash 13 version was tested uh, as well, a virgin version with uh, a Viton. A large pot of 100 low lead gasoline was heated via a heat lamp to an average of 110 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit 
in a, in a, a string of Dash 14 and Dash 13 O-rings from two different suppliers, Boonin, was immersed in about for over 24 hours. This established a baseline for swelling and efficacy. I mention efficacy because the largest Cessna 421 maintenance shop in the U.S. has to use Dash 12 or Dash 13 O-rings in this fuel controller and not Dash 14 because it's too big. The Buna N Dash 14 O-ring was used in the California video, just to say that. Virgin Viton Dash 13 O-rings were installed on either end of the plunger piston with an immersed Dash 14 ring in the center. The plunger was dipped into fuel just before installation for a little bit of lubrication. In other words, it was not inserted dry. One interesting note is, is that the 100 low lead turns yellow when exposed to heat for long durations, okay? And this was fuel obtained from the FBO at ADH. I'm gonna show the video in its entirety, except uh, I'm gonna double speed a couple of the portions that are not really important, relevant to the actual test itself, because otherwise it's too long. As I said, this is a baseline using 100 low lead. I want you to think to yourself right now, what are the results are going to what the results are going to show? You think in your head what do you what do you expect to see? I'm trying to keep between 110 and about 135 or 40. We've got jars that are sitting here and this is the heat source for this so one of these is an FBO plus hyaluronic plus titanium and it's hot and it's already good and hot so let me grab something to grab it with so by now this has been soaking in there for, for a week uh, well, except the ones we're going to use have just been there for about a day and a half, two days. So that's nice, bright, nice, bright, shiny 100 oil at a header. Just change it out with the toluene. This is what it looks like after it's been heated and aged for a couple of weeks. <laughs> this does kind of yellow look to well, it. Well. Yeah, it, well, it, the problem is, is it gets aged up by all the temperature on the, yeah. and, and it, you know, it heats up the, the cap and all that stuff. So in here, one of these, these are, these are all Dash 14s. Okay, they're all Dash 14s. But the ones over here are from one producer, one manufacturer, and the ones over here are from another. Okay. And you can see they've been soaking in this aromatic 100 low lead here, which you see right here. And these were virgin uh, as of, I believe, Saturday evening, or maybe even yesterday sometime. So they, they haven't been soaking very long, but they've been at some somewhat elevated temperature. Uh, up in the 120 degrees F range. So uh, I'm going to take one of these off. You can see visibly just between the two manufacturers of the Dash 14s that visually you square yourself up. Yeah, it's a, this this one, the left one, is much larger yeah. diameter than the right. And so I can put the calipers on it right quick. It's right around 700, 700, 701. And oh, by the way, here is a virgin one. It's not ever been soaked. So the virgin one is like 63, 628, 630, call it 631. Okay. 
Yeah, because it'll drop it by the time I get to 632, so call it 631. And then this one, which has been exposed to 100 low lead and only 100 low lead, right at 695 to 7 and then this other dash 14 is about 624 so what I'm going to do right quick is I'm going to put this one that's swollen right here in this middle position And if you do a close-up with this, you can see that this thing is, is very, very loose. Okay? And so the question is, is what happens if it goes in here? I can put the virgin I'm a little reluctant to put a 14 on there just to make sure we don't have a problem when we put a 13 on the end. Okay, so right now we've got a dash 14 uh, from one vendor uh, that's here in the middle and installed because it's loose it's not going to change the dimensions it really doesn't do any good to measure it again but just for the drill uh, it's right around 0 0.70 where it was before these are 625, 628 as 13s Remember, the busiest, most prominent Cessna 400 repair shop in the country says, whatever you do, you can't use 14s, they're too big, they'll cause problems, they'll, they'll, they'll stick, they'll crack, they'll fail. So I'm just going to get this wet just for lubrication. I'm going to try and put it in and see what happens. Again. This middle O-ring has over, ever only seen 100 low lead, but it's 100 low lead with a higher aromatic content that's consistent with uh, 100 low lead that's produced by some refineries that use more toluene than others do. So, I'm trying to put this in, get it in that far. Troubles. I'm not sure that I'm having troubles maybe getting it past this last O-ring because it wasn't lubricated. I'm going to take it off because it's got nothing to do with the problem. shouldn't be this hard. So it was not that old ring that was causing the problem. So with the 14 in the middle position, I got it in place. I'm going to try and cycle the actual actuator. It's all the way out, all the way in. It's getting easier. There might be probably a, isn't a there's probably a reason for that. Yeah. Put it in the middle position, which is the detente. And let's take a quick look. That one's okay, and we can see there, at least so far as we can tell. Oops. Yep. 
Broke the 14. Look here. Broke the 14. See the piece down in there? Yeah. So, here's your size 14 that's only ever seen 100 low weight. This guy right here. And cycling it like that. All kinds of little pieces. There'll be some more in here. There's a piece here. See some pieces there. Oh, there's a big piece right there. So you know, this is the third time in a row that I've so soaked one of these Dash 14 uh, mil spec Dash 14 O rings, uh, and this one has only seen fuel for 24 hours, but it's been at elevated 120, 125, 135 degree temperature. Uh, we put it in here. Uh, these two. Dash 13s both worked, performed their intended function, uh, and the Dash 14. So clearly, whatever information is out there, the G100 UL causes these O-rings, these Dash 14s, to swell and fail. Uh, that information is erroneous. Number one, the repair shops say you don't use 14s; they're too big and Secondarily, we have confirmed why you don't by doing this real-world test using 100 low lead, not G100 UL. So do the results of this baseline test show what you thought it would from 100 low lead? 100 low lead swelled Buna N-14 rings and when inserted it failed mechanically in two separate tests. I think the Dash 14 failed because the ring material started to roll up uh, due to the larger diameter, a little bit of friction, and then failing in tension. Okay, that break uh, looked like tension to me, and it failed rather quickly in the uh, process. When they started actuating, it failed almost immediately. I don't see the need to repeat this, any test at all with the Dash 14 O-ring is the wrong size to use in an invalid test. Over so four separate tests, he did two prior with the Dash 14 O-ring. It failed mechanically every time. When I go back, I'd like to do that test over again with G100UL and Dash 13 BNN O-rings. Uh, maybe two tests with the appropriate size O-ring, one with heated immersed O-rings and another one with room temperature virgin O-rings and see how that goes. The baseline shows that swelling occurs in Buna in O-rings and 100 low lead. Okay. The Canadian report demonstrate that swelling is a positive and that Im immersion tests are not representative of use and performance not how they're used, the rings are used. Of course, this presupposes that you're using the correct part number size uh, to begin with, okay? So I'm gonna go back uh, when the weather's better and redo, see what the engine test stand's doing and see how, uh, if we can do that uh, O-ring test again. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time on Flywire.